Good afternoon. This is Julia Witt up with Talk Story TV, and I have with me this morning Larry Oskin. He's an artist, and he works with artists, and he's invented a process called photo impressionism. And I'll let him tell us more about that. Well, photo impressionism is a technique I learned and created um, back in college. I learned, I, in college, I studied photography and fine art. And back then, before the digital age, I worked with Cotolith and Serograph silk screens. And I learned how to do a three-step process where you could turn a, a, a print or a film photograph into a digital, kind of a, what today is known as a digital image by uh, changing your blacks, whites, and grays. And then I was able to take my photographs and start to make them look like impressionistic paintings um, through a series of silkscreen steps. And over the years, I've kept the same technique and refined it. Uh, in the last number of years, I've refined it even further with digital imaging and computers, which I never used to use in the beginning. When I first went to college, we didn't have computers. So um, what I've developed is a technique where the photographs come out like fine art photography and they actually look like paintings. So when people come to an art gallery to see my work, they go, is that a painting? Because it looks so realistic, but it does, it's not a photograph, right? And, and I'll explain that, it, well, it started as a photograph, but I um, changed it to an impressionistic painting. I want my works to look like uh, some of the pieces did in the 18th, 19th century through an impressionistic mm -hmm. uh, technique. But I also want them to look very bright, very modern, very colorful, since I'm a color and field theorist at heart. Yeah. Oh, okay. I Yeah, you can see that in your work. Could you show our viewers some of your pieces so they can sure. understand what you're saying? Absolutely. Yep, and I'll show you a series of different collections just to get you started. Okay. Uh, so, for instance... One of my main collections is the Beauty Spa Glamour Romance Collection uh, because I work. In, I also work and own a company called Marketing Solutions where I do marketing for the professional beauty industry. So I have a lot of pieces that work with homes but also in spas, salons, medical centers, medical spas, and plastic surgery centers. Um, here's another one of a woman in a spa. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, beautiful. That's gorgeous. Thanks. Thanks. So they're all meant to be tasteful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want everybody to be proud of the work and happy with the work. When you invest in artwork, you want to buy things that you really like looking at, and uh, you want everybody else to look at. Uh, here's a few from my animal collection. This is a peacock I shot in Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Um, a butterfly from uh, Florida. Uh huh. In Key West. Um, a zebra from Arizona. Wow, that uh, one really Arizona. looks like a painting. Yeah, and it's solarized, so the colors are all reversed, but it's pretty bright. And there's one of a giraffe. I snuck over the fence at a <laughs> at a uh, animal refuge. I love so in a minute that. I'll show you off. Great. In a minute, I'll show you some flowers and landscapes, seascapes. Okay. And um, so where did you go to school, Larry? Um, from Kenmore, New York. So I went to school at the State University College of New York in Buffalo. I had a double major, double minor. I, had a uh, I was going for a degree in art education. I did my student teaching. But I also had all the requirements for a degree in graphic design and advertising. In the month before graduation, I went to the office and changed my diploma since I could have both degrees. Um, I was certified for both, and, and so I changed my degree to the graphic design degree. Uh, so I had the two majors, and the two minors were journalism as well as commercial photography. Okay, and so you used that to um, do these things for the beauty spa industry. But you're also mm -hmm. doing marketing for artists, aren't you? 
Yeah, I, it, earlier in my career, um, I might jump around a little bit on here, but I'll start by saying yes. Earlier in my career, I was director of marketing, advertising, and PR for the world's largest fine art company and fine art publisher, and they own the largest art gallery chain in the world. And so I was fortunate enough to work with artists like Peter Max, Norman Rockwell, Erte, Yaakov, uh, Gam, Levidang, um Marcel Mouly, many, many famous artists. They would, you know, the ones that were um, not too old would come to our office and we would uh, work with them personally. Otherwise, we would work with them uh, by phone. And so we did art openings for them and we did the publicity and we did graphics and uh, we had a lot of special events. So it was, it was a lot of fun working with major name artists to help market them. It was kind of a good marriage for me because I am an artist myself, but I'm also a market marketer. Mm -hmm. I mean, way earlier in my career, I started by marketing supermarkets, banks, real estate, and things like JCPenney, Buick, Pepsi, and all my advertisements had the same type of illustrations that I'm showing you now, but in pictures of Pepsi bottles or in pictures of Buicks, and, and so I used the same technique in all of my marketing illustrations uh, wherever my career took me. So all of your advertisements were real artsy looking? Yes. Wow. I um, Show the viewers some of your uh, landscapes. Those are wonderful. Sure. Sure. Uh, here's one from Paris, uh, kind of a cityscape. Can uh -huh. you see that? Yeah. And uh, I was... I remember this one uh, distinctly because uh, when I was taking a picture, my son called. I was in Paris. My son called from Arizona to say he passed the medical boards. He's a, a naturopath out in Arizona. This is um, um, a cactus from uh, California. Mm hmm Beautiful. This is, this is um, a cactus from Arizona. That so really quite, looks like quite pain. a large. Quite a large array of six different collections. I have a, a number of seascapes. This is from Newport, Rhode Island. And those are silk screened onto canvases? Uh, these are actually um, not, these aren't silk screened, although you do have silk screened. These are um, just imprinted, embedded on canvas. Okay. This was a real crazy night. There was a heavy um, rainbow and then a thunderstorm and the clouds are very crazy about a block from my house on Braddock Road. So you can see the trees, but the sky was really crazy colorful that night. It was perfect. So I ran home to get my camera. And while I'm here, I'll show you some flowers. This is uh, from my flower collection. These are water lilies from here in Washington, D.C. Oh, I bet you sell a lot of those. Yeah, flowers are popular, especially with the women. Um, and tulips from the Washington, D.C. Botanical Garden. Um, oops, a big yellow rose piece. Gorgeous. And some more flowers from here in Washington, D.C. Gorgeous. And roses. These were shot in, uh, oops, Florida. Um, they're really teeny, tiny blue flowers. They're about a half inch big each. They're really small, but they're blown up here where they're about 14, 16 inches big each flower. And that then looks here's just good. the last one I'll share with you. So oh, I don't uh, make you too crazy. That's Iris. wonderful. This is one of my wife's favorites. Yes, <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> So I, I hope those give you, you know, a bit of an idea of what my collections look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're great. Um, so, so how did you, how did you, how did this work out? You, what did you do right after you graduated? Well, after I, actually, before I graduated, I had a full-time job in an advertising agency in Buffalo, New York. The Wild Living Team Agency was one of the largest ad agencies in New York State and in, headquartered uh, in Buffalo. And so when I was a junior and senior in college, I was fortunate enough to start doing ads, like I said, for Pepsi, Buick, JCPenney, Cook's Beer, uh, M&T Bank, Buffalo Savings Bank, um, some realtors, so, grocery store chains like uh, Top Supermarkets. Then I worked with Bell Supermarkets and Loblaws and IGA Supermarkets. So actually I was written up in a couple of national magazines 
and a beauty company uh, contacted me because I was the marketer that was helping to market the first grocery stores turning into supermarkets. So a beauty company called me and said, there's a guy in Europe called Vidal Sassoon talking about precision haircuts, blow dryers, and curling ears. We've never seen him, but we've heard about him, and we would like to launch something like that in the beauty business here in the USA. You seem to be a creative marketer. Would you be willing to switch to the beauty industry? So I met them. I went to Little Athens, Ohio. Um, took a, and it was a great offer. I uh, worked in marketing, advertising, and PR for the beauty industry with them for five years. Eventually mm -hmm. joined the Regis Corporation where I helped start Regis Hairstylists. I did start Master oh, Cuts. Wow. I had 42 different divisions. So I've actually been working in the professional beauty business most all of my career. And so that's how the basis, the big basis of my artwork is glamour, beauty, uh, and because I work with salons, spas, medical centers, medical spas, plastic surgeons, besides working with all kinds of normal businesses, other businesses. So the, the natural transition of taking my business needs with photography transferred into my personal art uh, desires, and I like to celebrate beauty. I'm inspired by beauty. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy photographing um people and women in particular. I like helping them look and feel better about themselves. I like how it improves their self-esteem, their self-confidence. It just helps them look and feel better. So that's the pride and joy of my collection is, is my glamour and beauty work. Wow. Okay. And what would you um, advise a young person who's thinking about your career? Well, I definitely have a lot of advice for that. I'm open to people calling me... Uh, I would suggest if you're really young, visit with your um, guidance counselor or your art teacher. I was fortunate enough in, in second grade I had my first one-man show. Mr. Young, who is probably not living anymore, was a guy who was my second grade art teacher, and he contacted my mother and said, your kid has some art talent. Can I give him some extra lessons one night a week? And I started to work with him. He helped me put on a one-man show. The, the point here is, if you have a child or, or there's somebody young looking at this, you should go and explore how to get extra lessons, how to take the time to start showing your work in art galleries. I was very lucky. In New York State, you can have a major and a minor in junior high. And so I'm in commercial um, graphic design and fine art. Photo fine art. Uh, I'm minored in journalism. So I was able to major in art. I uh, did art work all the way through high school, all the way through college and started showing art galleries from a young age as a kid. I, I even faked being sick from school many times just so my mother would buy me art supplies, new crayons, new coloring books. I just loved doing artwork every night, every day, every weekend, and I was addicted to it. So um, I suggest to, to the parents, give them plenty of art supplies. I suggest to the kids, don't be afraid to take some extra lessons. Like the kids who are taking dance lessons and singing lessons, you should take extra lessons in drawing, painting, sculpture. Just you'll, you'll be amazed at how exciting it is. Yeah. Wow. And how about, um, tell us about any, some of your best or most uh, enjoyable exhibits you've done. Well, uh, probably my biggest pride and joy is I exhibited at the Albright Knox Art Gallery in Buffalo, New York, which is considered one of the ten best modern art museums in the world. But I have exhibited across the United States, Canada, Europe. Um, I've exhibited in private retail art galleries. Uh, today I exhibit uh, in local and national galleries. Uh, I exhibit here in Virginia. Uh, exhibit um, the Mocha DC Gallery in Washington DC. I've done work with some private groups and organizations for fundraisers uh, where they take a commission. So, and, and plus I've been doing a lot of work um, that's custom work for people who want their families or the business or their business created into fine art for, to hang in their home or office. So I've actually been having a very well-rounded, um, diverse opportunity to, to promote my artwork. I mean, it's even more fun to create it and show it than it is to sell it, to be honest. <laughs> and you've met some famous artists, too. Could you tell us about them? Yeah, when I, back in uh, when I was working uh, out of Chicago with uh, the art company, I, I met Yakov Agam. I did some art openings with him. I met Peter Max. Uh, I, you know, I've, 
I, I've also become an art collector, so I started me. Oh, there's a painting in the background by Steve Kaufman, who was the protege of Andy Warhol and his assistant. Um, so, when, you know, I met him and bought a piece, couple, three pieces of his artwork. Uh, I was fortunate to fortunate enough to be able to meet a lot of famous artists through my life and career. And um, the walls of my house are loaded with <laughs> other people's art, uh, and not too many of my own. <laughs> because you have so many of them, huh? That's wonderful. What a Benny for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even, and when I was at the art company, it was fun to be able to buy them wholesale and then, then to see something that I bought for $200 be valued at $35,000. $35,000? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, really. So you're going to either leave a big um, inheritance... <laughs> <laughs> for your son. I'll never sell them. My, my, kids, my kids will have a huge art collection uh, someday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, you're going to write an article for us at t for tvbackstory.com? Yep. Yes. And what, what will I'm looking happen? forward to that. What will that be um, about? I'll shoot. I'll share, uh, since this story is about art boutique and myself, I'll share more about what I do, how I do it. I'll explain photo impressionism in great detail. I'll define how I feel photography is really a true art form, uh, even though it's only been accepted by major art galleries around the globe since the late 70s. It truly is an art form. It's, it's to do it really well, you could have a great camera, but to make it true fine art photography, you need to have some artistic touch to it. So I will write a whole article there that explains a lot of the things we talked about today in much greater detail. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Thank um, you. And can you tell us, people, your website, so if they want to go look at your photos? Absolutely. My website is www.artbutique.com. That's spelled A-R-T-B-E-A-U-T-I-Q-U-E. -E. It's different than boutique because I specialize in the beauty business. I like to celebrate beauty. I'm inspired by beauty. So the name is artbutique, B-E-A-U-T-I-Q-U-E.com. Okay. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. And can you think of anything else I've forgotten to ask you? Uh, no, not today. I just really, it's a pleasure to be able to be interviewed by you, and I look forward to hearing from people. Great. So if you have any questions for Larry, please go to tvbackstory.com. Either connect with his uh, website or put a comment on there, and we'll make sure he gets it. Thank, Thank you, Thank you Larry. so much. It's been wonderful. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.